Well, Gladys, it's been an absolutely wonderful ride. It's been great. I love you, and I'm gonna miss you so much. But the time has come. So many blessings, big love, and I appreciate you. Thank you for everything you've done. Brandon dropped me off at the airport. I found this van on Craigslist. After almost two years with Gladys, it's time to move on to the next step in my journey. I head to Florida to learn to sail, and then it's time to cross the Atlantic Ocean. After about a three and a half hour delay, about an hour waiting at customer service, I got a $10 food voucher and a free night at La Quinta Inn. I was supposed to be getting into Florida tonight at 11.30, but instead I'll be getting in around 2 p.m. tomorrow. Upon arrival, I was greeted by my good friend, Celine, who some of you may remember from the days in New York City. I don't know how to open up this garage door. Going to meet Tyler Binkley. He is um, from Tampa and he's coming out to help me film sailing school. So going to meet up with him, but I can't figure out how to, f to get out of here. Hey guys, uh, my name is Tyler and I am uh, upon this beautiful journey that Dylan has offered me to be a cameraman on the sailboat trip. How far did you drive today? 450 miles, 500 miles from uh, Tampa to Pensacola. How long did that take? Uh, about seven and a half hours. Damn, commitment, brother. I appreciate it. Captain Jeremy with Reef Runner Sailing and we are teaching Dylan how to sail. There's a good video on YouTube actually about sail theory and there's a guy walking around asking just people on the street um, what makes a sailboat move. But if we think about it as if our sail was an airplane wing um, and an airplane wing has the high and low pressure along that curvature of the airfoil and it creates the airplane to go up, it creates that lift, our sail is just an airplane wing vertical. We spent a few hours learning sail theory as well as how to tie some very useful knots. Finished up the theory, the classroom stuff, going onto the boat, gonna go sailing. How you feeling, Tyler? I'm feeling pretty great. The safest place to get on a boat is out the shrouds, because that's the beam of the boat. And that's where you're going to have the least amount of, of, uh, of uh, healing or uh, wiggle of motion of the boat. However, our boat has this handy swim step right here at the back. We can just step on board like so. It is not an outdated tradition to ask permission to come aboard somebody else's boat. It's a good habit to get into, especially if you're going to be sailing around a bunch of other people and you're doing raft ups. You don't just want to hop on somebody's boat and they could be down below cooking and coming aboard. As you come aboard the boat, you're letting everybody else on the boat know that the boat could start moving. Captain Jeremy gave us a quick brief on our boat defiance and then it was time to start practice. You always want to go into neutral and pause for about a second in between shifting gears. And I always say give it like a two count. So if you come into neutral one, two, then you go into next gear. So that's neutral right there. Yeah. It so doesn't neutral like you'll be able it. to feel in the center. So now that our transmission's working, we're ready to get a game plan to get off the dock. Coast Guard rule number five says that all times while underway, you must have a lookout. Uh, and that's a visual lookout and a audio lookout. Cast off the bow line. Go ahead and tell it cast off the stern. Bows away. Bows away. And you can go ahead and put us into a port here. Run it hard to port. Hard to port. Put it in neutral, 
once we get that forward momentum, we're able to steer our boat. We'll do a test spin so you can see what the radius of the boat looks like. We'll do some practice and just stopping. Go put it all the way into neutral and just keep our bow straight at, pointed straight ahead. And into the wind, it usually takes about a boat length and a half to two boat lengths. If we were with the wind, we would give ourselves three to four boat lengths. We we're just about to stop and our bow is going to get blown off. So gonna, let it blow off to the We're going to let it blow off and we're going to heave to just under our just under our freeboard alone. When you heave to, yeah, your bow to your bow is going to get blown off. To heave to, you're going to counterbalance that. Like, we can pause our action. We can recollect our thoughts and figure out what we need to do to get out of whatever situation we're in. And when you're hove to, the wind is basically coming over your beam. Get behind the wheel. Get on the other side of the wheel. And you see how you have to really hang on to that rudder? Yeah. Now you can steer like normal. So steer that way. Basically, whatever way your rudder's pointing is where your stern's going to go. Now we can throttle back. So this is essentially how we would med more too. If we had an anchor line out the front, and we were going to hook onto this as our, our uh, stern anchor. Just a touch of reverse for me. Very nice. And now we can go into neutral, and we're going to drift. And if I can get within five feet, I can use a boat hook and a line to yeah. tie on a stern. So we're plate. close enough now. Yeah. yeah. And now just go and throttle into forward gear to hold us there. A starboard okay. side turn is the best way to do a standing coat because it's using prop walk and prop washing yeah. flavor. We're going to put it into a forward gear just until we start feeling momentum forward. Uh -huh. And we're going to put it into neutral. And then we'll put it into a reverse gear just long enough to get our prop walk through, but before we start moving backwards. Uh -huh. So you never want to move forward and backwards. All you want is that prop walk yes. to turn you with your tour with gear and then your prop walk in that reverse gear. Cruise in reverse. There you go. And you see how it stops our forward motion and prop walk pulls us over. Now you can go put it into forward. Now go into neutral. Very nice. And then give me another boost in forward so we can get through the wind. There you go. Now go into neutral. And now give me a good hard prop walk. You see once we get through that wind how much easier it is yeah. to do that standing turn. So we just rotated our boat basically yeah. on itself. We're going to use about a 45 degree angle of attack onto that dock. Yeah. You're almost going to feel like you're going to hit your bow. Okay. And we're going to have a little more speed than what we would normally do so the wind doesn't blow us off it. Mm -hmm. And then right when it feels like we're going to hit that dock, you're going to turn your wheel hard to starboard and you're going to put it in reverse. And that, that prop, prop walk with walk. reverse is going to pull us right into the dock. And I'm going to catch a spring line and then we're going to hold it just with that spring line. And this first round, we might just do a bump and go okay. so we can get a feel for it. Now straighten up. Now keep the rudder hard to me and put it in reverse. And now we can use our prop walk to walk us in, but we're already getting blown off the dock. So our first bump and go, now we know that our approach needs to be a little bit closer before we start our turn, and we can have a little bit more speed. So steer hard to starboard, and we'll just do another turn and do it again. And here we are stopped in a position where I don't even have to use my boat hook, and I can grab the spring line to pull us in. Woo! Very nice. So I'm going to use this as our spring line rather than our own spring we're emptying the poop container. <laughs> this is how you, you do it. You take this Ghostbusters gun and you suck it up into the hole and then you just slurp all the poop out. You do this to be courteous to the to the next guy so that they don't have a... So then they don't have a really, you know, waste covered Ghostbusters gun. Instead, they've got a seat covered one. So fuel supply on. Very good. And then you're going to turn your key until you hear it beeping. Then you're going to push the start button until our engine starts. The first thing we want to look at is where is our wind coming from? In our case, the wind's going to blow us off the dock, so we're going to have an easy departure off. And we're off. We're all clear. We're ready to sail. On the line to the left, go ahead and take that gasket hitch off. Oh, this one here? Yep. No, we can take the gasket. And you'll toss that entire main sheet line down the companionway hatch to let it run smooth and free. There we go. And then you can open that clutch all the way open. Yep. So now our boom's away. If we were going to go up, we can move this boom. And it's free to run. And then take your blue and white halyard line. Give me one or two Wait, this one? Two wraps. No, the other, the big thick one in your right hand. Okay. Two wraps oh, this is your way. sheet. This is, exactly. okay. And we're going around this way? Go you know, twice around it, clockwise motion. There you go. Now put that in the self-tailor. 
you go around this crow part and then lock it in and then grab a winch handle behind you. The yellow one works best. I got the wheel. And just crank it until you, you're watching that halyard tension. Keep doing the winch and look at your winch. Look at the, oh yeah. So put another wrap around it. We're not getting the friction we need. And just like you're doing your winch, you're gonna go pinkies down around it. If you try to make a loop, that can catch your fingers yeah. and it's pretty good. So yeah. once you start seeing white caps, it's blowing about 12 knots. Once yeah. it's pretty steady white caps, which we're almost there, it's about 15 knots. We'll typically start reefing our boats at 15 knots. But what we'll do is we'll roll out our head sail. And if we feel like we need to put a reef in, we can do that while we're either hove to or we can do it with our head sail. The typical rule of thumb for reefing is you'll reef your mainsail first, then you'll reef your head sail, then you'll put a second reef in your mainsail, then you put a second reef in your head sail, and then from there you'll probably just take your head sail, put it away completely, and then you might make the decision to put your uh, mainsail down completely too. Attack. Ready. Attacking. until we get our sails filled in and straighten us out on that course. Nice. So we're on a collision course with that sailboat ahead of us. Who has the stand-on vessel and who's the giveaway vessel? Uh, what tack stand. are we on? We're on the port tack. What tack are they on? They're on tack. What's the rule, the starboard tack, port tack rule? Starboard tack is uh, standing. They're the stand-on vessel, so we would give way to them. Yep. What would be our course of action to change the collision course? We would uh, bear off. We would point away. to their stern. Huh? We would point to where their stern is now. Yeah. So we would get there by the time they pass. Yeah. Let's go ahead and make that adjustment. We'll bear away to his stern. That way we can give him a clear and concise signal that we're altering our course to avoid a collision. Now your head sails locked and come and get this one. Undo all those wraps. And haul all that in. Once our main picks up, watch your wheel now. Just watch, you don't have to touch it, just watch what it does. See how it starts turning up by itself when the, the mainsail powers up? So now you're cleaning it off, you can take back over. You're gonna control your boat. Not bad, right? Yeah. Let out about 150 feet of line. 12 foot of depth plus about a four foot free board. Need about 16 feet times seven. About 95 feet, 100 feet of line, so we let on about a little extra to keep that 7 to 1 scope. I uh, got into a decent anchorage, lost out a nice fork mooring. When we boil water and cook stuff that it's in boiled water, we'll use seawater. Is that going to be super weird for you? No, I'll do it. We've made it to our anchorage tonight. Uh, did a bunch of sailing, 11 miles, 11 and a half miles of sailing in this 34 foot hunter sailboat. Let me give you a tour. Jeremy, the wonderful Jeremy, Tyler, cameraman of the day. First of all, okay, Tyler's got this cabin back here that's about like eight, eight, eight times the size of mine. He's two inches taller than me, and so he needs eight times the space. Here's the salon, I've taken it over. Um, and this is my space, right? So like, you know, it's basically the size for a kindergartner. But we got the galley, and then we got the salon and the nav table, instrument panel, and everything else. The captain's bed. <laughs> yeah, and this is where Jeremy is sleeping. I'm over here complaining about sleeping back there, and Jeremy's sleeping on the couch. Uh, this is my first time sleeping on a sailboat. I've always like been on cruises and stuff, and nothing nothing this small, this compact. So it's, it's gonna be an interesting first night's sleep. Specifically standing out, just all the all the maneuvers you have to do as a, as a sailor, and, you know, think ahead, you know, your, your plan of course might change. Uh, my day was fantastic. I'm switch sides with you. We went and did a lot of docking drills. I uh, learned how to dock the boat. Docking is usually the scariest part of a sailboat. And then we got out sailing. We got uh, Dylan doing some tacks single-handed, uh, getting a feel for the boat and what the boat can do in heavy weather. Um, then we're cruising up to our anchorage. We snapped the main sheet. The main sheet broke. What we're gonna do is heave two right here. So we're in a hove two position, emergency situation. We lost our main sheet. We're gonna backwind our jib. The jib is trying to pull us downwind. You're gonna put the wheel hard over to port, it's and that's on. gonna heave us too. That's gonna give us a position to drop this mainsail. Go and fire up our motor. And 
turn us back into the wind. There we go. And uh, we did a great job heaving the boat too, pretty quickly, and uh, got our main mainsail down, um, got our boom lashed down, and we were able to figure out a solution to fix our problem. We'll just put this away since we're heading on to an upwind course. Uh -huh. We'll motor the rest of the way in. Disaster at sea. Day one. Long life at sea ahead.